In this video, we'll continue building our components. If we look at the final app, we can see we're missing the search filter component as well as the shortlist. Let's start with the search filter. I'll jump in Sublime Text and we'll create a new component in SRC components, which we will call search.js. As we've done before, we'll import React and we'll also import component from React. Oops. For this component, we will use an ES6 class component because we'll need to access something called refs. Refs is a way in React to access a value of a DOM element and we'll use it to access the value of the input field in the search filter. You cannot access refs with functional stateless components, so that's why we're using an ES6 class here. Class search extends component. Inside of there we'll have a render method, as usual. And let's start by just returning some static uh, markup. Return. So we want a form element. I'll get rid of the action for now. And inside that we want an input of text type. There'll be a few uh, attributes here, so I'll just write it on multiple lines. We'll have a place holder that says type to filter, that, that, that. and um, let's start with that. I will export this component, export default search to make it available, save that file, and now in my app.js, the main component, above the names list here, we can have our search component, like so. But before I can have it, I have to import it here. Import search from components slash search. Let's save that and uh, see what's happening in our file. Here we go, we've got our filter search. It looks a little bit different because on the final app, if we inspect here, we can see that um, the form is actually wrapped in the header. So let's just add that quickly. If I go in the um, components search, I'll just wrap my entire component return into a header. And this should add this nice little blue background. Here we go. There's one more thing that you can see is a bit weird. There's that little padding on the body element. In our final app, I'm using a package that's called normalize.css, uh, which kind of resets all the margins and padding to zero cross browser. And uh, we haven't put it, so let's install it quickly via npm. What I will do is close my task and go npm i for install dash save to save in dependencies. And uh, the package is called normalize dash CSS. So we'll install that quickly in our node module folder. Start the server again, npm start. And now I will go in um, my index.js, which is the main file. You can see we import index. And we'll also import this normalize component. So because it's a node module, we'll just import normalize CSS. So now it should, before taking our style, just apply the normalized CSS. We can quickly have a look at it. If I look in normalized CSS here, all it is, it is a series of uh, resets, body margin zero, which was our problem. We had an eight pixel margin around the body. So let's look at that now. Here we go, no more padding. You can see if I inspect the body that the margin zero is applied. Before that, we had that eight pixel user agent style. Okay, ready to go. So we have a search filter, but it does nothing for now because it's just static. Before we start with states, let's quickly add this ref that I was talking about. So inside our input field, we'll add a ref attribute 
And React used to allow you, and you can still actually pass a string as a, as a reference, so you could say uh, my value. Now let's add a little method on our component called filter update. Inside here, I will have a const val, which is equal to this dot refs dot my value. So this dot refs is a way to access any ref and that my value will get this one. So first I'll just want to console that log, this value, but we need to trigger this filter update. So here we'll add an event listener on change. So every time the input changes, and what I want to do on change is call this that filter update. And because we're using ES6 classes, it's a good idea to bind this. So every time the value inside the input changes on change, this filter update um, method will be called and we should console log the value of this ref which is the actual input value. Let's give it a try. Save S. Okay, so I've made a mistake. This dot refs dot my value is actually the dumb element, but I want the value of it. So I need to add that value here to get the actual value of that input field. And now when I type S I M N, you can see this. And this is great, we can use um, this value to update the filter and filter for that string. In the React documentation, you can see that passing a string as ref is deprecated and it's recommended to pass a callback function instead. So the way you can rewrite this is instead of um, passing a string, you pass a function uh, and we can pass the value as a parameter. And what we want to do is call this that my value, which is the ref name we want to use, equals value. So we call a function passing the value and we store it into this that my value. Now up there, instead of accessing this that ref that my value that value, because we've stored uh, the ref into this my value, we can get rid of this. So we get this that my value, which is the in the the input element, and then that value. Let's give it a try. Yep, Simon, still working perfect. But now we've got a more future-proof way of handling refs. Pass a callback function instead of a string. Okay, I just want to quickly in my app.js add a bit of markup. And here I want to wrap my name list and credit inside a main element, which is a HTML5 element. It's for purely for layout reasons, as it adds some spacing. And you can see now there's nice little padding on the sides. We now want to have our shortlist element. So let's create a new component called shortlist, new file. You know the drill, shortlist.js. I will import react from react. This time we can use a stateless component. So I'll export default and it's a function and we will return for now what does the text say as a placeholder click on a name to shortlist it so I'll just have a paragraph click on a name to shortlist it that 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 save that go in app and inside my main here I want my short list component that I will also import right after search here. Short list. Here we go. Maybe uh, it'll look a bit different. Doesn't matter, that's the place of the. So we have a search short list, list of name, and footer, which is the basic static app. Now in the next video, we'll move into using state and think about what sort of state we need to get our app going.